Let's get to DJ Chark. He met with the media today. Had a lot of interesting things to say, including just how comfortable he feels right now as far as his relationship with Gardner Minshew. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, Minshew, that's my dog on and off the field. You know, last year, I didn't expect, you know, him to be the quarterback week one. You know, I played in the preseason with him. I'm one of the only few receivers that was actually out there in the preseason uh, with him when he was battling those demons against uh, the Ravens. But, uh, you know, I, I love Gardner. That's, like I said, that's my dog. Anytime I have a suggestion or anything, he's willing to listen. Uh, he have a suggestion, I'm willing to listen. Uh, he worked with me on my strengths and my weaknesses, saying a very confident guy, you know, and just a good guy to be around. All right, DJ Chark met with us a little bit earlier today, getting ready for his third year, had an unbelievable season uh, last year as a rookie, uh, or really for him, for the most part, a rookie, because he missed six games with a quad injury uh, his first year. But he really evolved and ended up becoming um, perhaps their best football player last season. Yeah, 100% agree with that. You know, I, I was shocked, you know, at, as how well he played. You know, after obviously watching, being an SEC fan and watching football there, mm -hmm. um, and look for him to take another step forward this year. That's one of the things that I've all, always wondered, obviously, not being from Jacksonville or moving in and kind of watching the Jags more closely. Like, who's going to be that number one guy? I love Minshew, by the way. Yeah. I mean, what's there not to love? Um, but we'll see how, how things come together. But, you know, you know as a general manager, and we talked a lot about the pandemic and what it did for you and, and your team when, when everything fell apart here in, in mid-March. Can you imagine what it's like here down the road to, to try to put together this incredibly young team, once again, a new quarterback coach, a new offensive coordinator, and try to get things done for the most part virtually? You can't even get up, out there on the grass and work. It's unfathomable. I can't I can't imagine trying to work with these guys. I mean, I, I mean, obviously they're communicating via Zoom, but everybody's young, everybody's new. The only way you really get to learn each other is by spending time with each other. And that's already limited. You can't get can't be in larger groups. And so it's just gonna create, I think, a bigger hurdle for some coaches. You know, I heard uh, some, another sportscaster ask the question, you know, if coaches are on the hot seat this year, do they get a pass? Because mm -hmm. it is. We are in a pandemic and there's so many unknowns. You know, are they gonna get a pass? And, and I just I don't know. The same question with younger players. Does if the season goes crazy and there's two games canceled or postponed or this or that, do people are people still high on Minshew? You know, if he loses chart for two games because of it, you know, how, how does that work? And so I think we all I know myself, we're all watching to see how everybody reacts because in 2021 we're gonna be playing baseball. And so how do we react in that yeah. same way? Yeah, I, I'm not gonna speak for the people. I'm not gonna do it, but I, I have a feeling that this is the way that they believe it is. Um, you got to find out about everything here. You, you don't want to deal with a season where all of a sudden the tight ends aren't working again. Eifert goes down with an injury. You say Chark goes down with an injury. That offensive line uh, has, you know, some issues and they get beat up. you got to find out this year, Harold, is this the right coach? Is this the right team? Is this the right quarterback? Because you have two first-round draft picks. That left side of the line, I mean, Cam Robinson in the final year of his deal, Andrew Norwell looks like he's going to be a cap casualty next year. If you look at the dead money and, and everything that they could get relief on by saying goodbye to him. So and you could draft Justin Fields, you could draft Trevor Lawrence and have a totally new left side of your line in 2021. I mean, some of these scenarios are just absolutely out of the world, out of this world when you look at the Jaguars. Yeah, that's scary to think about, obviously. No, Trev, knowing the quarterbacks that are coming out, Trevor Lawrence, you know how, how much how stud much of a stud they they are. That's it's tough to even think about. But again, like everything, you win in the trenches, right? So I feel like you should always start there. And obviously, as your linemen get older, you have to be preparing and planning for that. Side note: I love Doug Marone, and obviously, I know people say he's a player's coach. I just think he's a good dude. He's just in very, general, he's an incredible. He's a very good dude. Um, and so, and I, I think he's a good coach. I do, I do too as well. I know a lot of other guys that have seen him coach, and other times they say, you know, given time or the right roster, he will win. But how much time will you be given? Mm -hmm. and again, it starts. And you start and lose, or you win and lose with your offensive and defensive line.